Hello everyone and welcome to the Spotlight webinar. I am your host Richard and today we're going to be looking at how to use Spotlight reporting. A bit of an introductory guide. What we're going to cover here today is Spotlight in an overview, creating an organisation in Spotlight, importing data into that organisation, some easy customization options and sharing your report. So let's jump straight into Spotlight here. So this is our main login page here. Once we log in, we're in Spotlight. Now there are a few things to point out here, um, particularly around the top banner. So we have our individual products listed here. As you'll notice as I click through them here, the background color and logo colors do change. So this is just to let you know which product you are working in. Our organizations will be listed here. Search bar if you do have multiple organizations. Easy way to search for organizations there. Our settings here, which will cover our overall spotlight settings which I will cover in more detail in a moment. First thing I'm going to do here is add an organization. When we add an organization to Spotlight, we can give it a name, a location, and an internal ID. So let's give it a name here. Now the location and internal ID are optional. Um, and can be used in, let's say, the search bar and other things like that. So let's add our organization. And before we look at the report, we're going to jump back to the main landing page again. And there we'll notice we have our organization. We have access to the latest report, uh, the latest activity and some action icons here. So we can view the most recent report, export the most recent report, email a copy of the recent report, or create a brand new report. Before we look at the reporting itself, let's look at the overall settings for Spotlight. So the cog icon up on the top corner here. Clicking this icon will allow us to access our Spotlight settings. Our practice settings here will allow us to control the overall settings for all of the Spotlight organizations. Here we can set the name of our practice we can select a practice logo that will go onto the cover pages for the reports. And we can select default report titles. So every time you do produce a report, it will be given the default title. Also areas to adjust the branding of your reports. So if you do have a particular color or you're wanting to adjust them here, this is where you will do that. And of course the report footer that you can customize and will appear at the bottom of each page of the report. Scrolling back up here to the top, we can see our users area. And this is where you will invite your co-workers or your clients to your Spotlight account. So if we add a user here, you can enter their name, the spotlight, the email address. And it is worth mentioning here that an email address can only be associated with one spotlight practice. You can also enter a location, which is again optional, and the user role. This is going to 
determine the permissions the user has and what they can access in Spotlight. So when you are inviting a user, it would pay to double check the access that you are giving them. It's also a checkbox allowing them to access templates. Templates are used in the report layout and we'll touch on them later in the broadcast. So once you've added your users, we can start creating organizations and creating reports. There are other settings here, such as forecast schedules. These are specific for Spotlight forecasting. Templates, which we will touch on shortly. Report defaults. Some default options for your profit and loss being able to change this to a EBITDA breakdown if you do use that and each report that you do produce or each new report will get the layout that is the default. The formula gallery here which is for our charts and zero HQ access. So those are the overall settings or the practice settings in Spotlight. But there are different settings for each organization. So these can be found using the settings link just below the organization's name. Clicking this link here takes us to a very similar looking page, but this time our settings are specific for the organization. We have our organization's name, their location, an internal ID. Again, these are both optional, but great to have if you do have multiple branches or different offices um, and you wanted to distinguish between them. The organization settings are also where you can set the end of financial year date for this organization. So it's picking up 31 March, but perhaps we are a June balance date. We could come in here and change that there. This is also where you can set the lock date. And the lock date is used to lock data down in Spotlight. Um, so any month prior to April, so if we select March this month and any prior month, we won't be able to edit or adjust. Also set the currency label for the report here. As you can see, we do offer quite a few currency labels here. I'm just going to select New Zealand dollars here. And we can also elect to show archived accounts. Particularly useful if you are importing data from your accounting system and archived accounts do exist. So we can opt to show these here. You'll also see that we can add a logo here for our organization. Now it is worth mentioning that if we do add a organization logo, that will override the logo we have put in our practice settings. So a great way of customizing your reports even further for your clients. We're going to go back here and we're going to look at a spotlight report. So we have created our organization now. Now what we're going to want to do is start importing some data, creating that report. So 
I'm just going to click on my latest report link here. And it's going to bring me into the import screen. So the workflow in producing a Spotlight report is fairly linear here. First, we will need to import the data from our accounting system. We'll customize that data. Then we'll move on to customize the report layout, and then preview and then complete the report. So as you might notice here, we do integrate with both cloud-based and desktop accounting systems with an Excel option for those integrations we don't currently support. So I'm just going to connect to zero for this organization. And the first thing I'll need to do is log in to zero. So I'm going to be redirected here to zero to log in. Because I've logged into zero recently, it's remembered. And it's showing me the zero file that my account is registered with. If your zero user details do contain multiple company files, they will appear in a drop down box here. But in this example, I only have access to one. So I'm going to allow access which is going to redirect me back into Spotlight and the data source is connected. So now we can start looking at importing data to Spotlight. So we can expand our data source. We'll see that it has never been imported, but we can import actuals, budget data, and the two zero tracking categories. So I'm just going to kick off a quick import here, importing actuals, budget data, and both tracking categories here. I can manually select the date range if I wish, being conscious that the lock date will prevent me from importing data previous to April 17. So let's kick off an import. Of course, once we have imported data and the new month rolls around, instead of importing our larger date range, I could just import the actuals for the one month and save some time in doing that. Also worth mentioning here that the budget that we do import from zero is the overall budget only. So we won't, we do not support any tracked budget imports. As you'll see here, we have our progress bar, letting us know we're importing and the percentage complete. It does take a little bit of time on the initial import, but each month when you bring your new month actuals through or you update your budget information, it's going to take quite a, a lot less time. Once we have imported our data, we might like to look at adding another data source. Green tick here, letting us know that the import was successful. And now our last import can be shown here. So we might like to look at adding some analytics or some workflow max data here, or even bringing through some non-financials from Excel. Once we have imported the data, browse to the customized data tab and look at the imported data. What we see here is our customized data grid. 
with the data source being shown here. If I was to import some Workflow Max data or some Google Analytics, I could switch between the data sources here using the drop down box. I can also switch between financial years. I can choose to show the data for my tracking categories. You'll see the data being brought through here. I might like to show my country as well. You'll see that there. So we have our chart of accounts in Spotlight. So our revenue accounts, cost of sales, expenses, assets, banks, liabilities, and equity. We also have our KPIs and targets and non-financials. So when you do first connect with Xero and import into Spotlight, what will be imported are the actual and cash values, the overall budget, and each account will be assigned a report code and given a default display name. So you might want to spend a little bit of time looking through the data grid here, making sure that the accounts have been imported correctly, that the values match zero. And interestingly enough, what we see here as we have May 18 as a period of actuals denoted by the white cell and then June 18 onwards we have yellow budget cells. So what I'm seeing here is my actuals up until May and then my budget values from there on. Also worth mentioning that you can switch between the accrual and cash values here. Notice the color difference when I have switched. Just, just indicating what metric you are viewing. Great. So now that we have the data in Spotlight, we can start looking at using a report layout from the customized layout tab. Now mentioning that we had actual showing until May and then budget values for the future months can be controlled using the report date. So this lets us pick our current month for the report. The impact on our customized data grid is that the current month and all prior months will show actual values and then any future months will show budget. But this is the overall layout of our report and we can start looking at customizing the pages and the content of the report. So scrolling through here, we can see we've got our cover page, which has our practice logo and our report branding colors. Now the pages that are showing here come from our templates. So we are showing our advanced template by default. We do have a basic and standard version as well, as well as some industry specifics. And you'll notice here we also have some custom templates. So once we have our report layout, we've made our customizations, we can save that as a template and we can select it through the Choose Template drop-down box. So now begins the task of customizing our report layout 
Um, perhaps we would like to include our executive summary. I can click the little cog icon here and I can include this in my report. You'll notice that this page is no longer grey and it is, will be included in the final report output. Of course I might like to delete this page altogether. Worth mentioning that anywhere we see a pencil icon, we can click and rename. So perhaps I would like this page, the title to be just balance sheet. Same for my profit and loss. I can click, edit that there, and then clicking on the white space to change that there. Do we have our tracking profit and loss because we've imported our tracking categories? Our balance sheet, a cash profiler page, cash flow statement, cash flow waterfall, KPI target scorecard, a chart gallery, and three others. Of course, you might be happy with just a basic cover page and a profit and loss. But we can start building out that report here by adding new pages. So I might like to add a balance sheet here. Insert that after my profit and loss. Change the name. And of course I might like to also add a tracking profit and loss. to show our tracking categories. I might like our overall profit and loss to show as the first page, so I can just click and then drag to adjust the positioning of the report page. Perhaps I'd like to add a cash flow statement as well. But again, we can start building out how our final report will look based on the data that we have imported. Of course, I might like to customize and change how my profit and loss looks. You can see that we have our profit and loss statement as well as three charts below. We can click the show settings here to adjust the profit and loss settings. So I might like to exclude my charts by just showing a summary only and an EBITDA breakdown perhaps. Changing that and then clicking update to update my profit and loss page. Of course we can also control the row options and the column options. Customizing our columns here. We might want to show our actuals first budget, or perhaps as a percentage of revenue. Easy enough to include that column there. And then we have our customized rows. Remembering that the default settings here, coming through from your practice settings. So in this case, I might like to include my cost of sales, my OPEX, my other revenue items as well. And updating our page here. Starting to build out and customize how your profit and loss will look. Of course, we might like to go through and do that to our other pages. Change our tracking profit and loss to an EBITDA breakdown that sort of thing, but easy enough to customize how your report looks. We might like to save this as a template so we can refer back to it later or use it across multiple clients.
once we have saved this template, you'll notice that it becomes available in the Choose Template drop-down box. Once we do have our report layout customized to our satisfaction, we can preview the report and then complete. I'll show you that in just a moment. Here we go here, we have our template saved in the Choose Template drop-down box. So now in any other organizations or any new reports, I can come back here choose my template and have my layout all ready to go. Since it is all ready to go, I can preview my report. Preview how the pages will look. Keeping in mind that the final PDF output will look slightly different because of the page real estate available in a PDF document. So once I'm happy with how my report pages will look, I can move over to my complete tab. Of course, I might like to adjust the name of our report. Remembering that anywhere you see the little pencil icon, you can click to edit. Now if we go back to our preview screen, we have our awesome management report, our prepared date, our color branding, and our logo as per our practice settings. Now that we have completed our report, we can look at emailing it to a client, presenting it online, we can download a PDF copy here, and we can also publish our report. Publishing a report is a very handy feature in Spotlight, as when I do this, just keep in mind the sections here, you'll notice that I've lost access to the import, customized data, and customized layout. So I can no longer edit this report. I can only preview and then complete. So now if I jump out to my main Spotlight landing page here, you'll see that my latest report for May 18, and I have published it at that date. Of course, we can just create a new report here and then go through the same process. We might like to change the layout here, preview, and then complete. Now, if I jump to my main landing page again, I'll go back to my settings, and this time I'll look at my report history. What you'll notice is I have access to all of the reports for this organization. So as time rolls on, if I did want to come back and look at this published report, I could do so in the report history. I could edit, download, email, and even delete the report from here. So a great and easy way of producing reports and then being able to go back and then download a copy of that old report. Great. So fairly logical workflow here, adding your organization, going through each stage of preparing your report, Of course, we will cover 
some more things in greater detail in our advanced webinar, um, like including some charts, customizing your charts, look at consolidations, and a few other things that you can include in your report. But today we did cover Spotlight in an overview, creating your organization, importing data into your organization, some easy customization options, and sharing your report. I'd like to thank you all for joining me here today. Um, I will stick around for a few extra minutes just in case anyone has any questions. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.